My name is Angela Coburn, and I'm going to take you on the fun journey of remodeling a lesson. So here we go. The basic components of the lesson are as follows. The grade is 10th grade honors world history course. Um, the student profile, it's an honors level, uh, but there are no bars to entry. Um, any student can sign up for the class. So many different levels of ability are present in the class. Also, students are from several different economic backgrounds, but most are white with some Hispanic students. Um, the topic is the end of the Cold War, cause and effects. Um, some of the standards that you'll see in this lesson are Delaware History Standard 2. Students will gather, examine, and analyze historical data. This is the analysis standard. Um, History Standard 4, students will develop historical knowledge of major events and phenomena in the world, United States, and Delaware history. This is the content standard. Economic Standard 3, students will understand different types of economic systems and how they change. This is an economic system standard. Um, also, some common core standards, ELA Literacy uh, 9 through 10, 1. Um, students will cite specific textual evidence to support analysis of primary and secondary sources, attending to such features as the date and origin of the information. And CCSS ELA Literacy Standard for 9 through 10, number 9, um, students will compare and contrast treatments of the same topic in several primary and secondary sources. The original lesson is taught mostly um, beginning with a short teacher-led session and then student-centered activities that can be done individually or with a partner. Um, the teacher would walk around during this time to check progress and to give feedback and help any students that are struggling. The activities involved in the original lesson include a mini lecture about changes in the USSR during the 1980s um, when Mikhail Gorbachev came to power. Um, it also includes a short clip of Ronald Reagan's um, Mr. Gorbachev tear down this wall speech at the Berlin Wall. Um, in this mini lecture we also discuss the changing relationship with the United States and why the USSR ultimately fell. We also discuss what it looked like at this point um, in regards to you know their economy, the everyday life, what the government looked like. Um, the last part or the second half of the activities in this lesson um, revolve around primary source readings. Um, there are three different readings from three different points of view, um, a world point of view, um, a United States point of view, and someone in Russia's point of view. Um, students have a chart. The chart asks them to fill in the causes of the Cold War, so this is recalling their prior knowledge from the mini lecture um, part of the lesson and discuss the significance of those causes. Um, the second part of the chart will ask them two things. One, about the effects in Russia and the significance of those effects, and then about the effects around the world and the significance of those effects. Um, the critical questions involved in this lesson, um, there are five main ones. One is how did the relationship between the USSR and the US change in the late 1980s? Um, the second one is was there a winner to the Cold War? And this would be um, discussed right after the mini lecture where we discuss the reasons for the fall and how the fall kind of happened. Um, and what it looked like directly after the fall. Um, the next three questions are all from that chart. They go hand in hand. What was the significance of those items that caused the Cold War? What was the significance of the end of the Cold War effects in Russia? And what was the significance of the end of the Cold War around the world? There are several things that can be critiqued about this lesson as well, the original lesson. The mini lecture will last less than 10 minutes. Um, the 10 minutes comes because there's about a three minute video clip as well. Uh, generally, I try to shy away from including too many details on the fall of the USSR because it can really confuse students. Um, they need to know the main reasons such as the failing economy and the more open policies of Gorbachev which led to the fall rather than anything too specific. Um, this is in line with the suggestions presented in the higher order thinking skills um, article. Um, saying that the lecture should be short with just the most important details. Um, there is a discussion as part of the mini lecture. This is also a positive of the lesson um, because according to King, Goodson, and Rahani um, on page 55, they say that you should break up segments in a mini lecture with questions, discussions, and other devices because attention increases when a question is asked. So the students are really expected to be on their feet 
throughout the um, lecture, so to speak, um, so that they're you know ready to answer any questions that we may ask, ready to be a part of the discussions on um, the changing relationship between the U.S. and the USSR and who really won the Cold War, if there was a winner. This part will likely remain the same because the questions associated with them are good for challenging students to think. Um, students often are very divided on whether or not there was a real winner to the Cold War, especially because there was not any actual fighting. So many students um, really seem to evaluate this argument of, well, can there really be a winner in a war where there's no fighting and in a war of words and a war of ideas? Um, so these questions really do um, challenge students to think a little more critically. The end of the lesson will likely be revised because the questions related, it are too, related to it are too general. Um, the documents associated with the cause and effects chart are good, but the questions are far too simplistic. Um, the question that asks students to define causes of the end of the Cold War does not involve critical thinking, um, nor do the questions that ask students to simply define the effects of the Cold War. Um, as suggested on page 45 of the Higher Order Thinking Skills um, article, Teachers should prepare questions that go beyond simple recall of information. Um, as previously stated, these causes of the Cold War were already discussed in the mini-lecture. Asking students to think about why events are important is good for critical thinking, but I think they could more directly align with the dimensions of critical thought. Um, here I'm asking students to explain why the effects they discovered in the primary sources are important, but there is no real extension or examination beyond that. Uh, in the Critical Thinking Handbook, written by Paul Martin, Vetran, and Kreklau in 1989, um, they state, The teacher who believes in personal freedom and thinking for oneself does not spoon-feed students with pre-digested answers to those questions, nor should students be encouraged to believe that the answers to them are arbitrary and a matter of sheer opinion. This is written on page 20. So here, students are not really pushed to explain or question the effects or their reasoning behind why these events are important, as they should be. Um, they're just asked more to state why, they're, why they believe they're important. So this is perhaps the most important piece of the lesson um, to change in the remodel. The remodeled lesson includes five main new critical thinking strategies that come from the dimensions of critical thinking. The first new critical thinking strategy is S29, noting significant similarities and differences. Um, for this critical thinking strategy, students will better examine the causes of the fall of the Soviet Union with the fall of other countries or governments throughout history. Critical thinking questions will include, how was the fall of the Soviet Union similar to and different from the collapse of the Russian monarchy that preceded it? And how was the fall similar to and different from other falls, such as that of the Roman Empire or the Third Reich? So here, um, students will be able to compare and contrast the causes of the fall of the Soviet Union with the causes of other collapses throughout history. The next critical thinking strategy is S25, reasoning dialogically, comparing perspectives, interpretations, or theories. In this section, students will examine the primary sources more rigorously. For each of the three document, documents, students can answer, what is the point of view or perspective of the author? Why might the author have this point of view or perspective? And what factors could change their point of view or perspective? The next critical thinking strategy is S26, reasoning dialectically, evaluating perspectives, interpretations, or theories. Here, students would continue to evaluate each of the primary sources by comparing the perspectives presented in them. Critical thinking questions may include, what information from another, so what information from another so source could support this point of view? What information from another source could contradict this point of view? Which source seems to be the most credible or believable? The next critical thinking strategy is S20 analyzing or evaluating actions and policies. Here, students would more deeply examine the policies put into place after the fall of the Soviet Union, specifically regarding economics. They will have discovered these policies through the primary sources they previously examined. Students may be asked, what are the successes and failures of the switch from a command economy to a free market economy? 
Do you think the switch to the free market economy was the right course of action for the Soviet Union at this time? Why or why not? The final critical thinking strategy for the remodeled lesson is S12, developing one's perspective, creating or exploring beliefs, arguments, or theories. History generally presents the fall of the Soviet Union as a positive event because it was seen as the evil empire by the United States for many years throughout the Cold War. Here, students will have to answer the critical thinking question, overall, was the fall of the Soviet Union positive or negative? In answering this question, students must consider and examine both the implications in, Rus in Russia and the implications around the world. There will be sufficient evidence from the primary sources to support both students, so students must come to or to support both positions. So students must come to their own conclusion by exploring each argument. In conclusion, the lesson's main failures in critical thinking revolved around the final student-led piece, where students were asked to complete a chart on the causes and effects of the Cold War based on their prior knowledge and on three primary sources. The lesson has been remodeled to include much more rigor and critical thinking on the part of students. Students are asked to consider the causes of the fall of the Soviet Union and compare them with the collapse of other strong empires and countries throughout history. Students are asked to examine the primary sources with a fine-tooth comb, searching for bias in perspective and for both contradictory and supporting evidence between sources. Students are asked to consider the actions the Russian Federation took to improve their new free market economy and study the resulting implications. Finally, students are asked to synthesize all the information and evidence they have analyzed to determine whether the fall of the Soviet Union resulted in more positive or negative effects. Together, these changes create a more mentally stimulating lesson for students, which will improve their critical thinking skills.